Here on Democracy Now!, I'm Amy Goodman with Nermeen Sheikh. A three-week nationwide prison strike from coast to coast just ended this month, after prisoners participated in hunger strikes and called for the abolition of what they call modern-day slavery. For more, we're joined by a journalist who went undercover as a prison guard to document conditions at the Wynn Correctional Facility in Louisiana, run by the Corrections Corporations of America, now called Core Civic. Shane Bowers, an award-winning senior reporter at Mother Jones, he first described what he saw in a national National Magazine award-winning article for Mother Jones. This week, he published his new book that draws upon that experience and dives much deeper into the history of making profit from prisons in the United States, starting with convict labor and colonial era settlements. The book is titled American Prison, and Shane knows well about prison, both working as a prison guard in one and also being imprisoned himself in Iran uh, for over two years. Sh Shane. And welcome back to Democracy Now! It's great to have you with us. Thanks. Um, talk about why you wrote American Prison. Uh, well, I had gone undercover um, in a private prison. I wanted to uh, get a really close look at what life is like inside of these corporate-run prisons. And after that, uh, I realized that to really understand the role of profit in uh, the American prison system, we had to go really back. Uh, and I learned that. Uh, throughout American history, uh, prisons have been run at a profit. Our earliest prisons in the 19th century were, were uh, for-profit prisons, where labor was being uh, contracted out to private companies. Uh, after slavery, uh, the entire southern system was privatized. Uh, prisoners were uh, essentially fulfilling the role of, of that, that slaves had filled, working in cotton fields, uh, in coal mines for companies like the U.S. Steel Company, the world's first billion-dollar company. And explain these. People may not be familiar with this, not to mention plantation prisons. Yeah, the uh, there were uh, people, uh, prisoners were essentially contracted to planters and uh, forced to pick cotton. They were whipped, tortured, uh, had to meet uh, quote labor quotas, and uh, the system was called convict leasing. Uh, this system was actually more deadly than slavery. Every year, between 16 and 25 percent of uh, prisoners would die. Uh, it was on par with the death rate of the Soviet gulags. Uh, and eventually, these plant uh, the states actually bought plantations themselves. So instead of putting, uh, sending the prisoners to, uh, you know, private businessmen to put them to work on their fields, they would put them to work on their in their own plantations. Um, and uh, in doing the research for this book, I discovered that the uh, co-founder of uh, Core Civic, Terrell Don Hutto, uh, started his career actually running a cotton plantation prison uh, in Texas. It was the size of Manhattan, uh, where inmates were forced to pick cotton, meet, co meet and cotton quotas. Uh, he lived on the plantation with his family. He had uh, what was called a houseboy, uh, an African-American prisoner who had to serve his family. Um, he ran the Arkansas uh, prison system, which was entirely made of plantations. Uh, a federal judge had condemned what he called uh, uh, torture under Hutto. Uh, inmates who did not, who refused to labor in the fields were put naked in solitary confinement. Um, and he would run these plantations at a profit to the state. And it was his, uh, his work um, that and his ability to run prisons at a profit that attracted a couple of businessmen who proposed to him that they start a new company that uh, became the Corrections Corporation of America. Well, can you say, Shane, what substantively were the differences between uh, public uh, state prisons and these private prisons? Uh, in, in current times or no, in the past? No, sorry, historically, yeah. what you're talking about. Well, uh, it, it Basically, the, the kind of private, privatized system of convict leasing, uh, the states kind of became jealous of the profits that, uh, that the private businessmen were making and then bought their own plantations. But substantively, there was very little difference. Uh, in fact, a lot of the, them were the same plantations. Uh, Angola prison in Louisiana uh, started as a, uh, after the Civil War, a man who leased all the convicts in Louisiana named Samuel Lawrence James. Uh, bought that plantation, and he used convicts and put them on the plantation, and was essentially able to live a life that was identical to the life uh, before the Civil War, where he had prisoners laboring there. Uh, then the state 
later bought that plantation from him and ran it as a state prison, and it is still a state prison today, and inmates still are working in the fields there. How did the profit motive shape um, what you saw when you went undercover um, as a prison guard in Louisiana? And, I mean, you begin with this just amazing story. Um, you actually did not lie about who you were right. uh, in your application to become a prison guard. Right. They just never asked you. Right. Yeah. Uh, they, uh, when I did a job interview, you know, they were almost trying to convince me to take the job. It was a $9 an hour job. Uh, the main way that the company makes money uh, is by, uh, you know, offering lower wages uh, than public prisons and also uh, having low levels of staff in their prison. Uh, the company is, you know, cuts corners um, in many, many ways um, through staffing, uh, medical care. I met a man who in the prison who had lost his legs to gangrene after spending months asking to be taken to a hospital. Uh, the company uh, was resistant to take inmates to the hospital because, if they would, they would have to pay for it. Uh, you know, all of these, these things uh, kind of affect the, the bottom line, ultimately. Um, the prison was more violent than uh, the state-run prisons, which were also very violent in Louisiana. Um, there was, in a four-month period, uh, 200 weapons uh, found in the prison. And you talked about your own experience and how being in this place made you feel more violent. Yeah. I mean, there, there is enormous pressure um, on the people who work in these prisons. Um, there, you know, most of the people that work there are just kind of poor people from the town making $9 an hour. It's a very dangerous job. And the staffing is so low that it is literally impossible to do the duties that, that people are meant to do. And it, you know, has a, a very uh, powerful psychological effect. Attorney General Jeff Sessions rescinded President Obama's memo for the Bureau of Prisons not to enter into new private prison contracts. How have these for-profit prisons thrived under President Trump? Well, when uh Obama announced that the federal government was going to stop using private prisons. The stock price of Core Civic dropped by half overnight. The day that Donald Trump uh, won the election, uh, the stock price rose more than any company in the stock market, probably because people assumed that uh, Trump's uh, immigration policies would lead to greater immigrant detention, and uh, private prison companies control about two thirds of immigrant detention centers. Uh, after Trump uh, was inaugurated, uh, he rescinded the Obama-era decision, and the company is now uh, doing better than it was um, a couple of years ago. You mentioned the Don Hutto immigrate, uh, Don Hutto himself. Mm -hmm. I remember when we went down to Texas and went to the Don Hutto Immigration Detention Center, which is now a Im women's immigrant detention center mm -hmm. in Texas. I mean, the story of the separation of families, yeah. how this has led to the thriving of these private prisons. Yeah, actually, in the middle of that crisis, the the stock price of Core Civic rose by 14 percent. I mean, there, uh, this is the. Immigrant detention is kind of the frontier of, of the private prison company. It's really their area of growth. Hmm. Well, we're going to leave it there, but we're going to do part two, and we're going to post it online at democracynow.org under Web Exclusives. Shane Bauer, the award-winning senior reporter at Mother Jones, his new book is just out. It's called American Prison, a reporter's undercover journey into the business of punishment. And that does it for our show. Democracy Now! has a job opening for a full-time broadcast engineer here in New York. Find out more at democracynow.org. Democracy Now! produced by Mike Burke, Renee Feltz, Carl Wills, Laura Gottesdiener, Tammy Warnoff, uh, Sam Alcoff, John Hamilton, Robbie Karen, Hani Masood, Trina Nadura, Tamari Astudillo, and Libby Rainey, Mike DeFilippo, and Miguel Naguera, our engineer. Special thanks to Becca Staley, Julie Crosby, Hugh Grant, David Prude, Ariel Boone, Vesta Godars. Tomorrow, Michael Moore on Democracy Now!, his new film, Fahrenheit 11.9. I'm Amy Goodman with Nermeen Shea.